Let us all read from the Bible, the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1. We'll read till verse 8. So you can join along and read along with me. How many want to stand up just for a moment? I know I just sat down, but for reading the word of God, why don't we stand up once again just to read these verses, giving God the reverence and the respect as we read his word, for we receive it and we accept it and we believe in it and we live our lives according to it. So let us read the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1 till verse 8. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason God will send them strong delusion and they should believe a lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but at pleasure in unrighteousness. Thank you. May be seated. The first book of Thessalonians chapter 4. He had written to them already from verse 13. Some of you would have gone through this very familiar passage where he tells them about the return of Jesus Christ where he says I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep so it's telling about those who had already passed away from this world who once were there as members of the church but at that time were not there and he's asking them how they should react and respond in such a situation saying lest you sorrow as others who have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus he comforts them and says do not let yourself be lost in sorrow as the world is or get into a continuous state of depression and brokenness that your entire life gets derailed know that there is hope for them and they are in Christ Jesus and they will return when Jesus comes continues in verse 15 and says for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep he's saying the order in which those would connect when the Lord returns he says we will not be the first ones who will meet with the Lord but he continues saying the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first they will be the first ones who will rise up we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air 
and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So the dead in Christ will be the first ones who would get resurrected and they will meet with the Lord. And then we who are alive and remain will then be caught up, will be taken up, will be clutched up. Here he's speaking about what is familiarly called as rapture. And this is different from the second coming. That is what my focus is on this morning. As a church, you need to know the things that are going to take place to you and to the church and to this world. What will be the next spiritual, heavenly event that will take place in the church? The most important thing that you need to know and you need to be ready and prepared for. There are many verses which tell about Jesus Christ coming and there are people who get confused about what is what but this passage tells us about what will happen to the church who are alive and remain when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds there are two incidents that will take place first is the rapture which is completely different from the second coming as the Bible calls it so the rapture is when Jesus comes and in the clouds he does not set foot on earth it says here in this verse that we read in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of an archangel and we will be together with them we get caught up we go up he doesn't come down to earth we are caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord not on earth but in the air in the clouds is it there in your Bible so this is not where Jesus sets foot on Mount Olives and sets down into Jerusalem in Israel to rule and reign for a thousand years there are many verses which tell us the difference between the two as we read this passage that we saw first in the book of 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 we want to go through it verse by verse so that this which is important would be part of your life that you'd understand it because he writes in the first book of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 which we also read saying I do not want you to be ignorant every one of us was once ignorant before we read the Bible before we met with the Lord to be ignorant is nothing to feel ashamed of but to continue in ignorance that is what is which we need to avoid and you need to avoid you need to educate yourself you need to read the Word of God and this morning we want to see from the Bible what God has revealed to us so that we have clarity and we are focused on that which is about to take place to the church next not thinking that Jesus will come and he will sit down on his throne in Israel in Jerusalem and we'll definitely get to know about it in the news at that time that will be too late if you're still here or not you need to come down with him riding in the clouds on a white horse when he gets down from heaven to earth that is the event that will take place later after you go up to heaven and we're going to see a few scriptures from the Bible which shows the difference between the two so first is rapture second is second coming first is the word caught up the word rapture is not there in the Bible if you want to get technical and wonder where is this word what the Bible says is being caught up and theologians are the ones who came up with this word and there is nothing wrong because if you look at it even the word Trinity is not there in the Bible but God reveals right in the beginning and right till the end that God is God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible we see that though man is the one who gave that term so let us not be caught up in that term but let us be caught up when the Lord comes the most important thing is that you need to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ watch and pray so that you do not get left behind that is why I'm focusing on this that the Bible is very clear and it shows the distinction and it shows they both are different and separate but it has been written in such a fashion here a little there a little line upon line precept upon precept 
so that only those who have the anointing of God will be the ones who will understand. The Bible even tells at certain points the mystery where even the angels want to look into the things but they do not understand why because the angels do not have an anointing to understand that is the spirit of God who opens the eyes that is how you were born into the kingdom of God that's how you knew that Jesus is the way the truth and the life God is the one who gave you that understanding you were birthed by God the Father and the Bible is written in such a way that the enemies of God will not be able to understand everything clearly the devil can read it he might quote scriptures but he does not really know many things but only those who are anointed will be able to receive it in your spirit every Sunday morning I come here not just to communicate with you with my words from my mind to your mind that is secondary that is why the words that I speak sometimes might not be very important I look to first and primarily communicate from my spirit to your spirit to deposit from my spirit into your spirit that which sometimes even words cannot explain only those who are mature enough in the Lord will be the ones who will not be caught up with the words that this is not an entertainment program a talk show where the words are scripted and everything is done very beautifully and wonderfully where it just reaches the ears but does nothing to the spirit that will not transform you and that will not help you in the life to come only a spirit deposit will help you not just in this life but in the life to come after this and that only God can do in a supernatural way and that is what you need to seek after and here we see that this is a specific incident that takes place and it is very clear he is very clear in the clouds to meet the Lord not in Jerusalem not in Israel but in the air everyone is clear about that where are we meeting the Lord in the air in the clouds you get caught up you get taken up the Greek word is hapaso which means that you're plucked out it means that you're plucked out and taken out of harm's way it's like as if you and maybe your friend and you're maybe a small child or your own son or daughter is walking with you on the road suddenly you see danger approaching maybe a vehicle coming and there is no time to tell them to get out of the way you just grab them with whatever you can you might not even have the time to grab the hands and pull because sometimes they grab with the head and pull sometimes even with the hair even those who go to swimming when they start drowning the others who go to save them they instruct and even if you have to pull the hair you use the hair and pull them out because you hold their hand they'll pull you also inside because they're struggling themselves and they will catch your hand but holding their head and pulling them is a very important technique to save their life in the same way Jesus comes and he's going to catch up those who are near and dear to him and we saw in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 it says because you have kept my commandment to persevere I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world God has written everything down and he's got everything according to his plan and according to his schedule and when the hour and the time comes he will take the church away so that the next stage on earth can start oh we all want to continue and keep going but God has got a plan for this earth he's the one who created and he set the beginning from the end He's the one who's decided all that will take place in the book of Revelation. He wrote and he took John in the spirit and he showed him things which are things which are right now and things which shall be in the future. And he's saying, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test to those who dwell on the earth. So do not think this is just a specific incident that will take place in a particular place maybe in just one city or in one nation or maybe in one continent the Bible is very clear upon the whole world to test all who dwell on the earth everyone will be tested you cannot escape it if you're there on earth you will be affected by it you will definitely have to alter your life your life will irreversibly be altered at that time after this rapture this being caught up happens whether you know Jesus whether you do not know Jesus whether you accept Jesus or whether you accept the Bible or not it does not matter what you believe or do not believe in everything changes 
so you got to know that so you got to prepare yourself and this rapture is completely different because the book of revelation says what the second coming of the lord jesus is in revelation chapter 19 verse 11 you're going to see a, quite a few scriptures i want you to read and go through it so that you're clear i'm not telling something which is my own interpretation looking from the word of god i want each and every one of you a part of the house of god and the church of jesus christ to know the distinction and the difference so that you're prepared and you're ready and you're not ignorant that one day you don't have to moan and cry when the sign of the son of man appears saying oh what is happening i do not know you will be happy you will be expecting you will be rejoicing you will have oh the spiritual boldness to say come lord jesus i'm ready take me if you're able to say that each and every day then you're living your life on the right path you've got your mind set on the right things you got your heart set on the right things and that is the most important thing if you're not able to say come lord jesus i'm ready then it means some things are not settled in your life you've got to set everything in order because the days are coming to an end in revelation chapter 19 verse 11 onwards it says now i saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war his eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name written that no one knew except himself he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god and the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen white and clean followed him on white horses this is completely different why if you continue reading there isn't time i'll have to skip a few verses and go to verse 19 revelation chapter 19 verse 19 of the same chapter it says and i saw the beast this is antichrist he's referred to as the beast and it says and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against jesus christ who comes from the heavens riding on a white horse with armies not just one army but armies of heaven all the different spirits that have been created and also all the different people who are taken from earth following him all of creation supporting and following him and they were all gathered on earth together we can see this preparation taking place even now with hollywood and everybody panicking and all the latest avengers universe tells about an intergalactic war that takes place Oh, aliens coming in and the sky opening up and the earth completely altered and that's what unites everybody. What is the thing that will unite the nations of the world when they see someone opening the skies, ripping it up and a bright light shining in darkness in their fear. They will all gather together thinking it's an alien and Hollywood has prepped everyone and put a little bit of fear saying, oh, there are other aliens in this universe and they might come and they might invade and we've got to be ready oh be prepared and that is all the working of the devil he knows that he's got to get the world ready so that they can all gather together and maybe he thinks that he can overcome and that he can continue to rule on earth instead of christ jesus so that's how we see the beast and the kings of the earth not just one king but the kings of all the earth their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. So here we see there is a contact between heaven and earth. This is not something that happens in the clouds or in the air. Jesus comes and sets down. Oh, and then the beast is captured and with him the false prophet. So these two are distinct and they are there who work signs in his presence by which he deceived those who receive the mark of the beast and those who worship his image so these are the distinct different things that take place so here the rapture has taken place and the church has been caught up they've been there in the marriage supper of the lamb and then now they all come back and now the world has been put under pressure to receive the mark of the beast and to worship the image and after this is when jesus comes but jesus is told clearly in revelation 3 10 that the church will be kept away from such a time of tribulation so you can see clearly both are different things yes or no so the second instance that we want to see there will be three that i want to see there isn't time to look at everything it might get a little bit 
technical but you need to be very clear the bible says there are group of people called the Bereans who went home and searched the scriptures you've got to sometimes search not just very take it very lightly say give me a milkshake just full of sugar and a lot of easy fluids cold and nice to drink but sometimes you've got to get down to eating meat you've got to get out your knife and your fork and you've got to know how to handle it and not choke on let a bone or a heart piece get stuck in your throat you've got to know how to handle that in the same way let us look at the bible this morning it is for everybody do not think oh this is not for me oh this is too much beyond it is something which is boggling my mind we cannot be ignorant we've got to look and know it that's why i'm showing the scripture so that you can mark it you can note it so they can be very clear so that no one deceive you because jesus himself said they will come and they'll try to deceive you look at that passage towards the end so the second instance of rapture is in revelation chapter 11 verse 3 god is talking about the two witnesses they will come and prophesy 1260 days clothed in sackcloth they will try to speak on behalf of god and tell of the things that are going to take place for nearly 42 months but then they will not be received and then they will be killed by the dragon and the beast and they will be there dead their bodies will be lying there on the streets of jerusalem there isn't time to look at those scriptures and then after that three and a half days their bodies being there and the people not allowing them to be buried verse 11 it says in the book of revelation chapter 11 the breath of life from god entered them after three and a half days these two witnesses being killed and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell on those who saw them and verse 12 it says and they heard a voice a loud voice from heaven say to them come up here and they ascended to heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw them so if jesus is already here or not then this wouldn't happen jesus would just walk and say come on get up and tap them and they'll get up but he's not here the church is not here that is why they have this being said to them saying come up here a voice a loud voice from heaven this is after the rapture so the rapture has taken place at this time and that is completely different from the second coming of the lord because malachi chapter 4 verse 5 in the old testament the last book of the old testament it says behold i will send you elijah the prophet when when will god send elijah the prophet he's saying before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord so elijah is the one who's one of these witnesses the others enoch because both of those are the ones who have not died or not they just got caught up they went up and that's why god is saying let's send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord it's very clear it's not very difficult to understand yes or no i'm not giving you some deep interpretation and giving you some word analysis so that you can know it only when i tell it it's not like that it is very simple and it is all right there and what will elijah do it tells about what he will do in that following verse verse 6 of malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and hearts of the children to their fathers lest i come and strike the earth with a curse so god has not yet come so why is elijah being sent he's sent to the house of israel to the israelites who would not be caught up the church gets caught up and certain israelites who have faith in jesus christ will be the ones who are caught up but god has got a covenant with abraham that is why he wants to stir up those confused hebrews who are still saying oh where is messiah what is this they missed all the signs but god is still so compassionate that is why he sends elijah the two witnesses and enoch and they are coming so that they can stir up the hearts of those in the nation of israel the family of god the jews who are there so that they can connect reconnect with god they will come and they will perform signs and wonders and that will make the children of israel the jews who are there right now accept that oh god has been merciful to us he had sent christ and we missed it and so now god is giving us the last and final chance and so they will turn their hearts to the lord jesus christ jesus himself agrees to this so do not think it's an old testament prophecy what does it have to do 
Matthew chapter 17 verse 10 the disciples asked Jesus saying why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first they're asking Jesus what do you have to say about this and Jesus answers and says in Matthew chapter 17 verse 11 Jesus answered and said to them indeed Elijah is coming first and will restore all things so he does agree he's not disagreeing but he also says but I say to you in the next verse I don't want you to not see that verse and later get confused when someone says that go to the next verse 17 verse 12 Jesus is saying Matthew 17 verse 12 but I say to you that Elijah has come already and they did not know him but did to him whatever they wished likewise the son of man is also about to suffer at their hands and they understood the next verse 13 it says then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist Jesus is referring to Elijah the one who will come in his own body and he will come and he'll restore all things but the spirit of Elijah has already come through John the Baptist who is Elijah Elijah is the one who sent to an apostate nation which has gone away from God those who were into Baal worship those who forgot the ways of God and Elijah was sent as a shining light he called the whole nation to Mount Carmel he brought fire back down he is the one who sent to revive the nation of Israel and the same way 400 years of silence John the Baptist is sent so that he can revive and prepare the way of the Lord in the same way again Elijah the one who's been taken up will come himself so that he can restore all things that have been lost to the nation of Israel now the temple is not there you all know that the people are scattered all over the world in different nations they will all be brought back that is a prophecy they will come from far and wide God will gather them from all the corners of the world I said even in India some of them have left and only few are there there are many places some are remaining they will all go back why Elijah is coming only when they come to that same place in the city of Jerusalem the nation of Israel Elijah can restore and they will build the temple there and they will be able to get back into that worship which was there in the Old Testament it is all there in the Bible the beginning of this chapter 11 book of Revelation we saw that before we read about the two witnesses it says in the first few verses then I was given a reed like a measuring rod this is John the Baptist and the angel stood and said to me rise and measure the temple of God the altar and those who worship there when did this happen this happens after the rapture and so he's asked to measure those who are there to note them down and we know that there are one lakh four hundred four forty four thousand who get taken up from the 12 tribes of Israel and these are the ones who are measured there and he says but leave out the court which is outside the temple and they do not measure it for it has been given to the Gentiles and they shall tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months and they the two witnesses were the one who came and he restored the temple worship I want to tell you if you're here when the temple is built then I think it's too late and if the worship is started there and they're ready there they're getting up the whole Old Testament system up it means the church is taken up because only after that these two witnesses will come and they will restore all things that's what Jesus said in Matthew 17 11 what we just read saying indeed Elijah is coming first and will restore all things what is he restoring the temple worship which was lost which is even now not taking place there tells about John the Baptist in Luke chapter 1 verse 17 so that you're very clear about what I'm telling you it says he will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah so it is all what God has revealed why to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children so this is what the prophecy of even John the Baptist was he is given a spirit which is similar to bring that nation which is lost back in the right path just like how Elijah was and Matthew chapter 11 verse 13 and 14 Jesus again says for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John and if you're willing to receive it he is Elijah who is to come these are prophetic words he is Elijah but he doesn't say who has already come he's Elijah who is to come he's a pattern of Elijah who will come you can see that was Matthew chapter 11 verse 14 he is Elijah who's come to revive now but doesn't mean that the real Elijah has come already but he is Elijah the form of Elijah who will already will also come later you might not get it but the Bible tells us clearly in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15 saying that which has 
already been and what is to be has already been. God knows the things that take place or not. The world itself says history repeats itself. People forget. They lose the right systems and the ways. They change the markers. They change the borders. They change the good. There are good traditions which need to be followed. But as generations pass by, they ask questions and break down all the walls saying, why this is there? Why we shouldn't do that? Why we cannot do that? That is what is happening in the world. Saying, why this is wrong? Why that is wrong? I'll do whatever I want. And rebellious, resistive nature and saying, I can do anything I want. No one can stop me. They've forgotten the things that they're going to do or the things that already took place. Like how even in Sodom and Gomorrah went to the point where God had to strike them down because it was such wickedness goes from level to level to level where it reaches a point where it cannot be accepted by God at all. That's why he's saying in Ecclesiastes 3.15 that which is has already been and what is to be has already been. So Elijah was there and then John the Baptist was sent with the spirit of Elijah but doesn't mean that Elijah will not come and he will come definitely. Again in verse 9 of chapter 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 it says that which has been is what will be, that which is done is what will be done. Verse 10 he's saying is there anything of which it may be said see this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. And verse 11 he says the next verse there is no remembrance of former things nor will there be any remembrance of the things that are to come by those who will come after. They stop reading the word of God. They forget that they need God. Those who once had a love which is called the first love slowly wander away. The very first church or oh, the apostolic church, the Ephesian church till they go down to being a church like the Laodicean church, the last one that Jesus mentions about all the seven that are there, total apostate state where Jesus is standing outside the door and knocking. Outside the church, he's knocking on the door saying, if anyone will hear my voice, I will come in. They first lost the first love and slowly, gradually went to the point where they didn't have any love, they even forgotten who Jesus is, they've locked him out and they're doing something there and it is called the Laodicean church. We've got to be watchful and careful because the Bible says there is no remembrance of former things. If you do not look at what God has said did take place when the book of Revelation was written around 2000 years ago, the same thing will happen in any church anywhere in the world. We've got to, that's why I see the scriptures and we've got to keep ourselves in the right path, on the right track so you can see that the rapture is completely different in the second instance to the second coming because if Jesus is already there, why should the witnesses be carried up again? The third thing that I want to see, the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And verse 52, he says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed he is telling about how there is a change that takes place the dead will be raised up and we who are here in a moment in a twinkling of an eye will be transformed and that is completely different from what the book of revelation chapter 20 onwards it says about how after Jesus comes and settles down on earth in Jerusalem, in Israel, in the temple of God, then the angel comes down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan and bound him for earth thousand years so this is very clear who is this dragon the dragon which gave power to the beast the dragon is none other than the devil and satan himself 
that serpent of old saying no these are the words the bible uses on him and god is telling all of those so that you do not get confused at any time saying oh maybe this is different that is different no he's telling the angel with the key to the bottomless pit comes and he grabs the devil the dragon the serpent of all the satan and binds him for a thousand years and casts him into the bottomless pit a pit which has no bottom he throws him there and he'll be falling and falling and falling with nothing to grab nothing to hold nothing to stop no ability to get out of it such a vast endless pit that only god can create the god who creates the heavens and the earth and the universe he has prepared this place and as he's cast into the bottomless pits and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished but after these things he must be released for a little while and i saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them and i saw the souls who had been beheaded for their witnesses to jesus and for the word of god who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with christ for a thousand years but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished this is the bible calls the first resurrection and they're saying blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand years so only those who follow the lord jesus christ and do not receive the mark of the beast they are the ones who will be the ones who will come back to life i saw the souls of those who have been beheaded for the witness who had not worshiped the beast and not received his mark they lived god raised them up and they reigned with christ for a thousand years this is completely different from what i just read in first corinthians chapter 15 was 51 and 52 we who are here in a moment in a twinkling of an eye being completely transformed that happens before the beast is revealed before the antichrist is revealed before they all have to receive the mark in their hands because the bible says clearly there will not be anybody allowed who would be able to transact without receiving the mark of the beast in their hands there will be no transaction that will take place all this prophecy would have looked very much impossible to be fulfilled even 100 years ago because travel was difficult i told you 100 years ago what was the fastest way of traveling how many flights were there you can just go to the airport was there an airport in chennai if you want to go to another continent it might take you a month or three months go for 150 years before that nothing the industrial revolution was hardly there and people are afraid to even get into trains this was written more than 2000 years ago so it was not possible to control the whole world at that time because if there are a group of people in one remote continent and they do not want to accept the rule of the beast then they might be able to continue but now all that is not going to be possible oh they will hunt down they've got the militia which will come it might not be in countries particular army that comes down but it might be a group of them it could be like how when isis took over militant islam and started beheading people all over in the middle east no one could stop them it was a group of people who function and work like an army they had that army training they were all the intelligent leaders intelligence leaders from saddam hussein's former regime they had come and joined with al baghdadi and was helping him to enforce whatever he wanted his extremist ideas and the same way the antichrist will come and he will be able to get people and they can form teams and they will be able to go wherever they want you know about how for a few years the one who's called as the smuggler the veerappan who was here in south india he went from one forest to the other from criss crossing from tamil nadu to karnataka to kerala and they took a few years to capture him but they formed a team of hundreds of them going after just one man because they wanted to so that they can capture him and they did eventually what i'm trying to tell you is 
When this was written, it would have not been possible to ensure that everyone receives a mark. But now the world has been prepared for that. In just one moment, a leader of the world, a leader of a country, a prime minister or a president can come online and say, all your money is now worthless paper. Unless you go and deposit it and you got to get something new. In the same way they can come and say, all the paper currency is no more valid. We found a very wonderful system to keep all the terrorists at bay. We want to keep all those who are stealing and cheating at bay. So the best way is to make all of you get that chip. All those chips are already prepared and ready. There are private companies which have mass produced them and just they can inject it into your body with a syringe immediately so that a unique identification is given to you in your forearm or it could be in your head. Even now there are facial recognition software that are there all over the world. In China there's a supermarket where you just go in and you can buy everything because the camera is there and the software there identifies you. The iPhones, you just have to take it and look at it and it sees you even in the dark. You don't even have to key in the password, you don't have to give your thumbprint. It recognizes your face and then opens up for you. In the same way they will say all this will help you. The world is now prepared. Everything has been put in place. All that needs to happen is for Jesus Christ to come and take the church, then it will be a total lockdown. That's why all the CCTV cameras are set all over there. You can see the lights flashing. You think you can run out and go somewhere. They just have to rewind the recording and see where this person went. All they have to key in is, this is his face. This is the structure of the face. They don't even have to sit there and analyze hours and hours of data. They just key in the details and the computer will say, this person was passing down in this road and this camera has caught him and they can know where you started and where you're heading. Why all this has been prepared? All of the world completely connected now. One antichrist can sit in one place and with just one screen and with one computer, with one control center, he can control the entire world. Software is installed in every computer, every place that you purchase. It is all computerized now. All they need is just a virus that they can send and immediately through the internet it goes and locks down everything. You've seen that happen. Nations going against other nations and saying, oh, this nation attacked all our computers and blocked it. All he has to do is just get one smart programmer and send a virus to all the computers saying, unless you receive and accept this system, your system computers will not work. Everything is digitalized. All your bank records are there in the computer. Before you had your passbooks, they'll go and say, see, I have five lakhs. You're saying there's no money, but now it's all not there. It's all there in a computer recorder there. Just one hit on the hard drive and it can forget everything and it can be nothing but gibberish. They drop the pen drive and then all the data is erased. That's how the situation is now. What I'm trying to tell you is everything has been made ready. So do not think this is strange. Everyone will be forced to receive this. They will of course not be told that it is something that is going to control them. It will first be presented saying it is something which will help you, which will be beneficial to you. Why do you have to carry a wallet and take cash and you lose it and you will get stolen. You don't need all of that. You can just walk in and that's all that you need. We will help you get all the things done without you having to even key in anything. So these are two different things that will take place. Rapture, we will be taken up before all this takes place because Jesus said, I'll keep you from the hour of trial. And we as a church need to be those who are used to solid food. God says, I will feed you with milk and not with solid food for until now you are not able to receive it. That's why he's writing to first to the Corinthian church in the first book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2. But then he's saying in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 17 he's saying, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. So we need to be people who've grown up in the Lord, not just in that born again state, but we've analyzed, we've studied, we received the word of God and God can now give unto us that which is very important, that which we need to be very clear about. So the first thing that we saw here, in the second book of 
Thessalonians chapter 1 is now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and are gathering together to him so Jesus is coming it is very clear that we are being gathered together for you are going to be taken up to be with the Lord and he's telling what we need to do and what we need to know at that time he's saying in verse 2 not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word this is not the Holy Spirit this is a human spirit or an evil spirit which can come and confuse people so the word used here is different so either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come because this could be a deception that can be presented saying oh it has already happened there's nothing no point so do whatever you want he's cautioning them and telling them it has not happened at all and I want to tell you definitely it has not happened so do not think this incident has taken place saying oh maybe they all disappeared sometime in the past and now we are just remaining here because there are all kinds of people who have all kinds of ideas which are there in the world they have the Bible they carry it and they say things which can confuse you which can put you on a wrong path but you've got to know that you need not be shaken in mind or be troubled you got to know that God will take you up he's got the power he showed it he did it with Enoch all you need to do is walk with him those who walk with him are the ones who will be able to be taken up you see Genesis chapter 5 verse 21 it says now Enoch lived 65 years and he walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters so he was not living a life of seclusion he walked with God 300 years and so all the days of Enoch was 365 years and verse 24 Genesis chapter 5 it says and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him so God is a God who will take you out of harm's way he took him even before the flood came God liked him so much he said come up here to my home and when you walk with God he will not leave you behind all you have to do is just walk with the Lord each and every day connect with God call his name pray unto him say here I am Lord I come to you this day and offer this day as a sacrifice may or will be done in this day in my life pray that you'd speak to me and tell me what I need to do and God will lead you and he will speak you and he will guide you it says about these group of people in first Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8 it says your faith has gone out your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything the Thessalonians had such faith that it was revealed without even the apostles having to say oh these people have faith and then he's saying for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God how these people completely changed their lifestyle they once were worshiping idols but now they turned to God to serve him the true and living God they could see the service of this church that was there and to them he's writing and saying in verse 10 the next verse and to wait for the son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus who deliver us deliver us from the wrath to come he is very clear that Jesus Christ will deliver them from the wrath that is to come there is a wrath that is going to be poured on all the earth but these group of people will be delivered why because they had such strong faith that their faith is revealed and known to all that even Apostle Paul need not have to say and commend them on their faith he is saying they themselves declare how you turn to God from idols to serve the true and living God again he says in chapter 5 verse 4 but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief 
you're not in darkness and therefore this day will not overtake you as a thief you're all sons of light sons of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as others do he's talking about spiritually there is no growth there is no progress it's a spiritual paralysis just born into a Christian family and just continuing saying oh I just do all these Christian things because my mom or my dad is taking me to the church or making me do this that can happen just born there and at the right time oh they will say oh you're 15 years old you need to be baptized in water you need to be baptized in water and say I'll buy you a bike if you get baptized in water <laughs> so oh, okay when things can go on like that all you need is a certificate and it can just you know the things that can be put on a religious mask out of good intention is why they say encourage and all that but you've got to know that you're following the Lord not because of your mom or your dad or your uncle or your husband is forcing you or your wife is brought you to the church saying oh I better come only then there'll be peace in the house it is not for that that we follow the Lord we see here it is very clear you brethren are not in darkness is there darkness inside your heart you've got to know that you've got to check it you got to ensure that there is no room for the devil or anything evil or any darkness that you're hiding away from the Lord which can keep you down so that the day should overtake you as a thief the day of the revelation of Jesus Christ for your sons of light that's why I'm saying let us not sleep as others do but let us watch and be sober why again he's saying in first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 for God did not appoint us to wrath he has not appointed the church to wrath he's not going to let you face the wrath of the son of perdition he'll not let you face the wrath of the evil and the lawless one he will not let you face the wrath of the antichrist the dragon who gives power to the beast and makes everyone receive the mark and is forced and we will see maybe in the coming weeks if there is time the wrath of God and the judgment of God on the earth during that time right now they say there are seven billion people on earth I think after looking at all the things that would take place hardly one billion might be there stars will fall from heaven there will be cataclysmic cosmic breakdown meteors will hit the earth oh the waters will become poisonous again and again it is said one third of the earth will fall one third is how much just seven billion one third goes off of the three parts one part is gone and again and again many things horse after horse pestilence and war and the waters taking over all these things come upon the earth and it is a painful time for those who dwell on the earth at that time that is the wrath on the wicked but you will be saved that is why we are looking at this he's saying again and again Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come first Thessalonians 1 10 against first Thessalonians 5 9 for God did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ so it will be taken up and out that's why you pray the Lord's prayer every day saying lead us do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one though it is for that particular day there is a testing do not lead us to test but deliver us from the evil one who will be revealed on that time you are also asking for that and God will deliver you on that time that season where the testing of the whole earth will come so you can escape that God doesn't want those who are near and those who are close to him to experience any of that he's a loving God he loves you he's made a way for you to get out of the situation going back and let us complete second Thessalonians chapter 2 the verses that we read verse 3 it tells about how the man of sin will be revealed let no one deceive you by any means let no one deceive you saying oh for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first there is a falling away of the church and the falling away of the world that happens such apostasy such wickedness seen that God is standing outside Jesus is knocking saying oh 
let me into the church and unless such terrible things take place God is the one who set all those markers and unless all those markers and all those points are filled up that day will not come and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition and Daniel himself speaks about this in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 saying in the latter times of the kingdom when the transgressors have reached their fullness God is measuring the wickedness God is measuring everything on earth that is why it is all written down the good things that you do oh you will have a breakthrough and you'll be taken from glory to glory from strength to strength as you show your faithfulness every time you come to the house of God it is you coming here and marking and revealing and you're proclaiming and you're declaring your love to your God and every time you praise God every song of praise every word of praise oh every hallelujah every amen makes a difference know that every lifting up of hands every clapping of hands a smile on your face because God is a God will reward you according to what you've done how terrible it will be you worked hard in your company for one year and they didn't give you the promotion didn't give you the increment didn't give you the bonus you will be really upset but for every work that you've done if you're rewarded then you'll be very happy yes or no in the same way I'm just sitting there like this and you're there jumping clapping hands and both of us get the same reward then is God just he's not just there he's got to reward according to what we do so your life is in your hands know that and live your life pleasing unto God every moment is a time that you can make it into a time where you receive from God or a time that you just sleep and let things pass you by grab that moment you'll never get it again you've been given a marked number of years and time on this earth and use each and every day he's saying the latter times of the kingdom in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 when the transgressors have reached their fullness a king shall arise having fierce features who understand sinister schemes he will be able to understand the dark spiritual things that only the devil can reveal to the Antichrist the others will not know all the spirit realm works there are many leaders on this nation who understood that Hitler himself went and he sought for this dark power he went and he sought for that spear that pierced the side of Jesus Christ he wanted to hold it saying oh if I hold this I will get power he sent his armies and groups of people all over the world trying to get objects and information about dark secretive power so that he can rule the world he was seeking after it I do not know whether he got it fully or not but he was able to bring the whole world to war at that time but this man the Antichrist will be taught by the devil himself he will know how to control the people he will know how to make the whole world bow down at his feet it cannot be done with human intelligence it cannot be done with even the resources that are there but it can be all done in the spirit realm because there are secrets in the spirit realm that when the devil reveals to him and he does that he performs it he says certain words things will completely come in favor deceiving spirits evil spirits that will go and it will be the ones that will turn the hearts of the people and will confuse them that's why it says a king shall arise having fierce creatures who understand sinister schemes and then verse 25 it says through his cunning he shall call deceit to prosper under his rule he'll be very cunning he'll be very crafty he'll present one image but what the truth is will be completely different he will say one thing but the reason for that will be completely different and he will make himself God that's the fourth thing that we can see from this passage in second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 it's saying who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God so when you hear that when you see that it means that the rapture has already taken place it is in line with what Revelation says and all the world marveled and followed the beast they look at him and they marvel at him and they follow him and they worship the dragon and they worship the beast why because Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 comes in line with Daniel chapter 8 where he says he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to control for 42 months three or six months so he opens his mouth in blasphemy against God and blasphemes his name and his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven so this will be the time of testing the time of the end Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 it says the 
There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time. So he is also talking about that there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. And that time your people shall be delivered. Who are these people who people will be delivered? Everyone who is found written in the book. That is the Lamb's book of life. Oh, your name has got to be written except Jesus Christ. Do not postpone it. Receive Jesus if you haven't even this day. Then you will not face this time of trouble which the world has never seen. How will this man deceive? It will be a, mostly a 42 plus 42 months. Attached deception. The first 42 will be all nice and flowery and beautiful and wonderful. Because Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. He will enter into Jerusalem and he'll say, I'll build the temple for you. He'll make a covenant with them and he'll encourage them to build the temple because right now they cannot build the temple there in Jerusalem because most of the place is taken by the mosque. He'll be able to sign a peace treaty with all the surrounding nations and they will be deceived by that. Why is he allowing them to build the temple? Because he knows that after they build it and they get everything ready, then he will go there and he will kill the prophets and then he will be the one who will be able to sit. How will he sit if the temple is not built? So that's why he wants the temple to be built. So first he will come and he will be all nice in the beginning. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 and in the middle but in the middle of the week seven divided three and a half he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering and on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. This is what Jesus speaks even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate there are many other verses that you can see Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 he says therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place so the Antichrist will come into the holy place he'll stop the worship that is there in the Old Testament and he will make himself God he will say I am your God Worship me, bow down before me, serve me. And when he says that, then let him who is in Judea flee to the mountains. That's what Jesus is saying. Those who are there, he's speaking specifically to those who are there in the nation of Israel. And let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house, but let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then. There will be great tribulation. These are the words of Jesus Christ himself. So I'm not talking about something which might happen, might not happen. It's not about some story, some tale. Some people gathered around a bonfire and got high and they're sharing something. It's none of that. It is clear and revealed in the Bible. Jesus himself says clearly what will happen. For then there shall be great tribulation. Such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, no ever shall be. See what a terrible time that is. You need to be sure that you escape. And he's saying, unless those days were shortened, shortened all, no flesh shall be saved. God will shorten that time. Because if he doesn't, when the devil is fully at his wicked work, no one will be allowed to live on earth. He will kill everybody. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is Christ or there, do not believe it for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the elect, see I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if anyone, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go there. Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. This is speaking specifically to the Jews who will be taken up, they will be kept safe in a place. There isn't time to look at that in detail, the scriptures reveal that. And they will be the ones who will be guarded by God. For who, wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. And then it says, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So there is an end to it. There is a beginning to it. The sun will be darkened. And the moon will not give its light. Stars will fall from heaven. Stars will fall from heaven. There will be meteor attacks. Oh, there will be comets which can come crashing down and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. And in this darkness, where there is darkness in the night, darkness in the day, you will not know the difference between day or night. 24-hour darkness which will cover the earth 
how will the plants live how will they be able to survive when there is no light there will be no life food will be scarce all around oh you better watch some bear grills program if you are not planning to be taken up with Jesus Christ and even then you might not survive it oh it's going to be such an evil time they will hunt down and then they will take all the food that is there and hopefully you will be able to survive off the land but why should you go through all of that I don't want that to happen say that oh I don't want that to happen take me Lord Jesus come oh Lord Jesus I don't want to see the Antichrist I don't want to know how he looks I don't want to be here on earth when he's there it doesn't matter who he is where he's from which nation or what group of people he is from you do not have to worry about all of that when you're taken up at that time the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven Jesus clearly writing it and giving then the sign of the son of man after the tribulation when darkness is there will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory they will all see it part of that day and the hour no one knows not even the angels of heaven but only my father but as the days of Noah were so also will the coming of the son of man be for as in the days of before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will the coming of the son of man be and he's telling clearly how this is a different situation this is not the time when the second coming happens that is what he spoke till now now he's shifting to what will happen before the second coming he's saying two men will be in the field one will be taken up and the other left two women will be grinding at the mill one will be taken up and the other left watch therefore for you do not know what hour your lord is coming but know this that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken Therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made rule over his household to give him food in due season. Be faithful, be wise. Do not let anyone confuse you. And the last three things that I want to see here the passage that we read it says is do not forget though he had spoken to them second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 5 now he's saying do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things he's already told them <coughs> but now he's again writing it because he doesn't want them to forget because that's how the state of man is seasons come seasons go Days come and days go, years come and go and then we can forget that which is important. That, it was, that is why it was written and given to them. That's why the church is not a place where we just release one new message after another. You've got to look at it again and again so that we do not forget it. So it's always there in our mind and we are always expecting and waiting for the Lord. And he also says, what is restraining the Holy Spirit is holding back the Antichrist 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 6 and it says clearly until he's taken out of the way and then the lawless one will be revealed it doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is not going to be there or not but his age will come to an end because even at this time of the Antichrist there are those who when the Holy Spirit was there and leading them to the Lord and saying come on get up time for prayer come on get up this is a Sunday morning come to church they wouldn't but when the Holy Spirit is not there, they'll have sudden fervor. They'll say, here, behead me. <laughs> they'll have such, and all the things will come true. That's how strong your will can be if you really want to. But if you're slumbering and you're in sleep, then you will just not listen to the Holy Spirit at the time that he speaks. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with power, signs, and lying wonders. Unrighteous deception. Why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. That's what happened. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.10 says why this happens. Because they did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. Say please get up son, please get up daughter. I'm not listening but when the devil comes and screams and everyone will get up and get on their knees. 
and start praying and open the search for the Bible and quote the scriptures, the sudden one, sudden zeal will come at that time. But let us not be in such a state, but when the spirit of truth and spirit of love comes and tells us very gently, let us respond at that time. Amen. But know this one thing. This is not the end. Jesus will destroy the Antichrist. That is the end of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. The Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. And you can reign with Christ Jesus on earth. For a thousand years, you will be the immortal who will walk here on earth, never dying. The others who do not have Jesus Christ, there will be people who still have not received him. God is merciful. He will allow them to continue to live to the end of the thousand years. And they will be given time even at that thousand year time to accept Jesus Christ. But still they will not accept Gog and Magog. Massive nations who are there right now. I don't want to tell the names, but we will see in detail why I tell that because if I tell it some of you might reject it so oh, this nation that nation but it is all exactly written who will be the group of people who will come against Jesus Christ and the holy city whom the devil will stir up from the ends of the earth finally and he will bring them all again so they will be there but they will die they will live for maybe 80 years 70 years I do not know 50 years maybe 100 years in the maximum but you who have accepted Jesus Christ and been given a glorious body, you will continue to live for a thousand years. No more death. How awesome that will be. You will be walking down and everyone will be looking at all. They will peep through the windows and say, Oh, that man, you know, he's... My grandfather said he was walking down the street 400 years ago. He's still walking. He's still moving around. He doesn't look like he's aged a bit. They'll come and ask, what special facial cream are you using, sister? <laughs> You're not getting any difference in your face for the past 200 years. Oh, you will have that wonderful, glorious body without any sickness, without any disease. You'll have the life of God. There are so many wonderful things that will take place at the time. Why don't we stand up at this time and pray and seek God's leading and guidance oh dear father in heaven thank you for writing and giving it all to us very clearly in your word the things that will take place and how we as a church your people your children your disciples need to be ready pray that each and every one here oh lord would be prepared that no one be left behind that oh god holy spirit you would lead and that you would oh lord work in each and everyone's life that they'll align it according to your will and perfect plan that they will, O oh Master, be taken up when you come, O oh Lord Jesus, that they will, O oh Lord, not face the wrath that is to be poured on all the earth. The hour and the time of trial, let it not come upon them, O oh Lord Jesus. Oh, pray that you will show your mercy and compassion, strengthen, O oh Lord, each and every one here. Give them the deliverance. Give them the strength and the breakthrough that they need in every part, every area of their life, oh Lord Jesus. Oh, that we as a church would be like all of the Philadelphian church, oh God, that we would receive, oh Lord, your love and that we'll receive your wonderful words and that we'll be taken up to be with you, oh Lord Jesus. We surrender ourselves, we yield ourselves into your hands, giving you all the glory, giving you all the honor, giving you all the power, giving you all the praise. In your wonderful and mighty name, Lord Jesus, we ask and pray, amen.